the game so far in Players' Cup 3 and there's no surprises as you well know that we're going to see a Sun match here but Jonathan Evans does throw a little Kyogre into the mix so we could potentially see some weather changes going on when we saw their match earlier Jonathan was able to utilize that Kyogre so well in their game too to be able to close out the game and I wonder if he's maybe going to adapt to try and make the Kyogre the star of the show in this rematch yeah, definitely. You know, the Kyogre is kind of Jonathan's trump card here. You know, it's the one thing that can really, if he gets it into the right position and he removes some of the, the threats from Leonardo's side of the field, they can really just dominate and kind of overwhelm Leonardo to the point where he's not able to come back from. But it's not that easy for Jonathan to do. He's got to worry about, you know, the Venusaur on Leonardo's side of the field. We've already seen how Leonardo kind of relies on that. And he's very patient with when he goes for that Gigantamax, if he goes for it at all, and just utilizes it as a tool with those sleep powders, getting rid and just damage onto the board things like Torkoal that we saw Jonathan you know utilize in that first game and then the Umbrian it comes back to the Umbrian for Leonardo which was so you know disruptive throughout most of those sets where it was using those yawns the snarls and then the moonlight taking advantage of the the sun because you get that enhanced kind of increase of HP when you do use that as long as the sun's on the field you can decrease that as well though if the rains up so Jonathan needs to kind of try and dictate the weather a little bit better mm -hmm. in this matchup but it's not easy of course yeah, I think weather control, getting that Kyogre where it wants to be, but I think also critically, like we were sort of saying to Aaron and Sierra earlier, that Torkoal needs to be able to stay awake throughout the game. Leonardo <laughs> was very well versed to be able to capitalize on putting it to sleep with that kind of turn one sleep powder from the Venusaur Umbreon lead that we saw Leonardo stick with. And it's going to be interesting if Jonathan's maybe able to preserve that a little bit better, um, maybe see a few shakeups in the lead from maybe both our players. There's a lot of mind games when you're coming into not just a rematch, but a best of five as well. It's a slightly unusual scenario for our players. Yeah, it is. And, and like we've mentioned, you know, uh, time and time again, it comes down to the mind games. But again, mm -hmm. you've got to make adjustments in these games. And I think, though, the one thing you can look back on from that previous match is, you know, Jonathan, every time, went for the Gigantamax with his Venusaur, but then allowed the Yawn to kind of come in from the, the Umbria. And, and that really just shuts, you know, you're getting two turns maximum out of your Venusaur then. So, you know, and then it limits your ability to what it can do in the match. Do you go for the G-Max Vine Lash into, mm -hmm. you know, the Umbrian, which can just heal off the damage, or do you target down the Venusaur again? And it, it's very difficult. If you've got something to maybe protect the Venusaur, that's the route you want to go down with, you know, that turn one. Um, the Incineroar, in my mind, I've already mentioned it makes complete sense. You know, you've got safety mm -hmm. goggles on the Incineroar. It's not affected by the sleep powder. It's a great matchup against the Venusaur as well. You know, it loves the sun. Um, and the other thing is, by not bringing the Toll Call in this matchup, yes, you, 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 you've only, you're only relying on your, your kind of rain, your Mm -hmm. drizzle ability from the Kyogre but the thing is that's all you really need if you're Jonathan you know and you're not boosting or activating the kind of the weather ball that is a threat you know from from Leonardo's side as well well Lee let's see shall we I think it's time the anticipation has built up let's start our grand finals of the Pokemon Players Cup 3 I'm very excited to see who is going to become our champion at the end of this set Leonardo Bononomi is starting with that Venusaur and Umbreon once again as his lead in this game one. But there was a change up from Jonathan Evans. The Venusaur is in play, but that Incineroar that you mentioned, Lee, is also taken to the field. Yeah, it's a really nice adjustment here from Jonathan. You know, he's got the fake out here that can really disrupt the Umbreon here because you know that is the Pokemon on Leonardo's side that's not likely to go for a Dynamax here. So free fake out there, or it gives you a little bit of room to maybe go after the Venusaur as well because the Venusaur on Leonardo's side of the field is is free to go for a sleep powder here and there's a lot more threatened you know a flare blitz can come out do a lot of damage and the last thing that Leonardo really wants to do is, is take a quick knockout here the yawn will still affect the incinero of course because the safety goggles only protect you against powder moves which sleep powder is well yawn's not going to be a problem in this turn one as Leonardo does make a change Umbreon's going to return to its pokeball in the face of the Groudon here so Groudon setting the sun are going to boost up the chlorophyll ability of course on both of these Venusaur but straight away we're going to see a dynamic Max that's coming out from Leonardo and where as you identified Lee couldn't utilize the sleep powder against either of these Pokemon on Jonathan's side I think Leonardo has decided it is time to Gigantamax up that Venusaur and maybe apply some more offensive pressure with the G-Max Vine Lash or even potentially going for those Max Quakes starting to boost up special defense on Leonardo's side in the face of a lot of special attackers on Jonathan's side Jonathan however going to match that with a Dynamax of his very own and this is where things can start to get offensive right off the bat in this grand finals going to be the Venusaur on Jonathan's side as well. 
Yeah, and the, the, the risk here for Leonardo is, you know, um, he brings in the Groudon, um, and if he can't get the knockout onto the Incineroar, and it goes for the Flare Blitz into Leonardo's Venusaur, then, you know, you're, you're, you're going down to your Sash straight away. We know the Sash is on there, but the thing is, it really kind of punishes, or, and it doesn't allow the Venusaur to really operate as well as you kind of want it to. We don't see the Flare Blitz here. We just see, uh, you know, Jonathan just taking a, a kind of an easier route in here, wants to preserve the Incineroar for later, which isn't a bad idea, especially because you get to cycle the Intimidate background, and now it gives you the opportunity to get something like maybe Tornadoes on the field, or Kyogre to really dictate that weather and kind of cycle that weather war and begin that from the from turn one yeah no damage being dealt out this turn the max guard obviously coming out there from jonathan gonna avoid the max flare and i like the synergy there from leonardo switching up the ball position bringing the sun onto the field to utilize obviously the weather ball on the venusaur to get that max flare that can apply a lot of pressure to the venusaur but jonathan as well switching out the incineral so it can be utilized a little bit later on and the parting shot weakening the venusaur means that the venusaur on jonathan's side now doesn't have to worry as much about those max flares as they are going to be dealing less damage yeah, and that's a big thing here. I think, you know, the, the Venusaur on Jonathan's side of the field has an easy target into the ground on now and, and maybe try and get that, that G-Max Vine Lash off like he's, he's kind of planning to do. And the, the, the Umbreon coming in here is going to be able to take it, but with the residual damage stacking up onto it, how many of those is it going to be able to take? Yeah, Leonardo really relied on the Umbreon in their previous game, so wants to make sure it's going to be preserved. The Venusaur on Jonathan's side is free to go for that G-Max Vine Lash. Umbreon is going to be able to take it reasonably well. You know, could possibly take another one and then one more as well, but with the Vines, the residual damage, things can get difficult. Umbreon's going to have to try and get a Moonlight in there. Venusaur and Umbreon taking some really big damage from the Tornadoes there as well. Yeah, and now you can see that the Umbreon is it's taking so much damage now. It's not in a preferable position like it has been in previous matches for Leonardo. It's so weak. It's in a very vulnerable position. And Leonardo doesn't really have the switch-ins for the Umbreon. It's an easy target for Jonathan because he knows there's no protect there. It's going to be the slowest Pokemon in the field. And the Tornado is in a, in a pretty nice position as well just to sit here, either Tailwind or actually get these heat waves, just fire these heat waves off, which are doing considerable damage to the, the Venusaur every turn because of that sun mm -hmm. boost that the Groudon's brought on already. Yeah, it's a really nice move choice here from Jonathan and his team building to bring Heatwave on the Tornado. It's not a common choice. We often see it really well paired up with the Kyogre, maybe wanting to set something like a Rain Dance to reset any weather. But going for the Heatwave means that it can be utilized well in Sun and can apply pressure, like you said, to Pokemon like the Venusaur here. It can also, of course, use this Prankster ability to get that Tailwind up on the field. So Jonathan has the speed advantage as well. And Venusaur going to capitalize on this, going for the Max Ooze into the Umbreon to pick up the KO against it. And that was certainly the pesky Pokemon in their previous match and winners finals. So Jonathan will be relieved to have that removed from the field but also critically get that special attack boost on both of the Pokemon on the field that are going to be able to benefit from that. Venusaur on Leonardo's side going to go for that Max Flare this time targeting down into the Tornadus but the parting shot earlier really is paying off here and Tornadus going to be able to take that really well. Yeah, the parting shot, I mean, like you just mentioned, Lou, really coming in, so useful here, and just allowing Jonathan's Pokemon to sit on the field and take these big attacks from the Venusaur here and really mean it's not really doing very much. And uh, now the Regieleki come on into the field, which we know uh, normally in a normal situations, even in the sun, it would outspeed Jonathan's Venusaur, but now with that Tailwind that we just saw that last turn, it's going to be very difficult for the, the, the Regieleki to get an attack off before the Venusaur, you know, and it is going to be threatened by those Earth powers. And there is the, the threat of sleep powder as well. You know, you don't want your Regieleki going to sleep, although it's a, it's a nice, easy turn here for Jonathan to potentially just go Heat Wave and then Earth Power into the Regieleki, and you can potentially pick up the knockout onto the Venusaur and that Regieleki in one turn. Yeah, poor Regieleki, not in the situation it wants to be. We also know it's not, you know, a Focus Sash variant here, so anything like the Earth Power Targ me down into it, it's not the bulkiest of Pokemon that's going to be able to pick up a nice KO, particularly with the Max Ooze boost that Venusaur's been able to get. So Regieleki, I think, quite wisely going for the Protect here. It just wants to hang around for another turn as Venusaur on Jonathan's side goes for the Weather Ball into that slot to no avail. Tornadus is going to follow up with a Heat Wave. Of course, not connecting on the Regieleki, but can it connect on the Venusaur? Oh, no, it can't. this is... Oh, it misses, and you think, well, it's always a risk going for something like Heat Wave there because you know the lower accuracy on it, it can come back and punish you, but it's not the, the worst case scenario. The problem is when the Kyogre potentially comes in for Jonathan now, 
is it going to be enough? Has it got the speed investment to out, outspeed the Reggie Alecki, you know, in, in the tailwind? It might be better, as we are thinking, like you can see now that Jonathan is considering bringing in the Incineroar, which might be a better option just to kind of give you that room where you can go for a fake out now into the Reggie Alecki, or maybe force a switch out because the Reggie Alecki has just protected here. Um, and then that gives you maybe a little bit of time to go for another heat wave with the, the Tornadus get the Venusaur that turn and do chip damage to whatever comes in for the Regieleki or, you know, vice versa, you actually get really good damage onto the Regieleki, but we're not seeing that. Going straight on and getting rid of that sun, getting the Drizzle ability activated on the Kyogre and um, in a position now where you can still do a lot of work. Yeah, that's the thing. Once you set the rain up as well, those hurricanes are going to be able to find the accuracy that they need to be able to apply pressure to the Venusaur. They don't have to worry about any heat wave misses here. And of course, Kyogre sitting a little bit vulnerable in the face of that Regieleki. But of course, if the Tornadus is able to deal with it, then Kyogre is going to be able to breathe a sigh of relief. Yeah, and it's, you know, I do mention about the, the Kyogre speed investment. Is it faster than the Regieleki in, in the rain? Uh, but you've always got to worry about this Groudon switch as well because you go for the Groudon switch here for Leonardo. It disrupts the weather, gets your your um, your drought ability active, overrides the the, the, um, the rain. But mm -hmm. then you are powering up the heat wave as well from this Tornadus, which is going to hit really hard. And as you see, Ooh. taking down the Regieleki, so getting kind of the best out of that turn from both. You know, if the Groudon doesn't come in, you get a full power. Our water spout off if you switch the sun in then Tornadus gets that full power heat wave boosted by the sun yeah i absolutely love this play here from jonathan really covering all the options like you said if groudon comes in then the reggie lucky is going to go down to that heat wave as long as it connects of course and the um, tornado was able to find its mark the Kyogre, however, even in the sun, being able to deal so much damage, particularly it was that single target type water spout, being able to pick up the KO against that opposing Groudon. And really lovely play here. Of course, that Tornadus as well. I believe obviously it got the boost from that Max Ooze as well. So it is going to be, when paired up with the Life Orb, dealing a huge, huge chunk of damage. Yeah, and now Jonathan's got this match locked up. The adjustment here with the Incineroar and the, the way he's utilized, um, you know, his own Venusaur and the, the Tornadus in effect really to take advantage of the, the sun uh, rather than setting the sun up himself is just really kind of overwhelmed Leonardo to the point where he's not really been able to kind of get, capitalize at any point and build any momentum. And we saw how quick the Umbrian got taken out there. And I think that definitely affects the flow of what Leonardo is trying to do in this match. And we do see the forfeit there and Jonathan go 1-0 into the lead in this first match here. I mean, I really like this comeback here from Jonathan. When they played in the winners' finals earlier, one of the things Jonathan struggled with was adjusting the leads in those last couple of games. It was constantly the tall call and the Venusaur. And I love the adjustment bringing in that Incineroar because it really does stop Leonardo being able to go straight away for that sleep in turn one and kind of force him to have to go for that Dynamax. And as you saw, the Incineroar was able to apply a lot of pressure, not only in the sun with the powerful Flare Blitz, but by going for that passing shot, it just meant that those Dynamax turns on Leonardo's side were not as effective as Leonardo would want them to be. Yeah, I mean, the parting shot, you know, it really showed how valuable that was. You know, it was a very smart play. It allowed Jonathan at that point to kind of readjust his board position, keep the Incineroar for maybe later on in the game and uh, really reduce the, the effectiveness mm -hmm. of the Venusaur on Leonardo's side of the field, which we saw just wasn't hitting for any real, you know, big damage like we kind of expected it to. You, you see the weather ball coming out from the Max Flare and you think, oh, well, it's probably going to be near to close to a knockout on the opposing Venusaur but it was mm -hmm. nowhere near that. And I think that's the, the valuable option. And the adjustment there was really nice. I think from the, the previous set, the Torkoal really didn't provide much. It, it gave a little bit of pressure with the, 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 the Yawn, but mm -hmm. I think really it wasn't causing too many issues for Leonardo. It's so easy just to click that Sleep Powder button into <laughs> it. And if it hits, great, then it shut down. And then it can kind of just maybe stall out the, the, the Gigantamax turns on the opposite side of the field. When that's not a thing, I can really apply my kind of uh, strategy and you know that the the, uh, the Umbrian going down there so quickly it was a big turning mm -hmm. point for Jonathan I think getting rid of that is a big key to him kind of going forward and maybe clinching this and the reverse can be said about Leonardo you know he needs to preserve it a lot better and utilize it like he was in those previous sets yeah, that was the thing. The Umbreon going down much quicker than it did in their previous match, I think, was certainly significant for Jonathan's victory there in that game one. But after the adjustments we've seen already, let's jump into game two and we can see how our players are going to adjust their strategies even more. If Leonardo is able to maybe keep that Umbreon in play, that could certainly see him maybe try and take a game back. So jump into game two and let's see exactly what our players are going to be bringing out into their leads here in this best of five.
So the lead's coming out on Leonardo's side. It's going to be Umbreon and the Charizard. So a lovely adaptation here from Leonardo. On the opposing side, though, Jonathan sticking with the Venusaur and the um, Incineroar here that, you know, got him that victory in the first game of this Grand Finals. And we talked about really good adjustments in that game one from Jonathan, but, you know, Aaron mentioned this earlier on in their first set, how the Charizard could be a really good utility for this Venusaur. Leonardo's identifying that really smart, bringing it here, because if you're going to have one Pokemon that pairs up and matches up against the Venusaur better than most things, it's going to be that Charizard, especially because there's no sun out on the field. You know, the Venusaur, there's no worries about you potentially getting out spared, getting put to sleep. You know for a fact that if you've got your Charizard and you max it here, you can get attack off into the Venusaur, then you're going to be able to knock it out most of the time and start that residual damage with your G-Max Wildfire. Well, we're going to see the Gigantamax Charizard jump into the spray here for Leonardo. Like I said, a very interesting adaptation, and it is going to be obviously the, one of the faster Pokemon on the field here at the moment. Looks like Jonathan, however, is going to match this Gigantamax, and I believe we'll be Gigantamaxing up that Venusaur as well to apply once again any residual damage coming out here onto um, the battlefield. Of course, as well, Jonathan could always go for something like the Max Guard again and try and get a passing shot off with the Incineroar, um, and then just try and negate some of the damage that this Charizard is going to be able to deal out on the battlefield, particularly while the sun is not up. And the Max Guard there from the Venusaur, really nice play, just protects it a little bit as Charizard does go for the G-Max Wildfire straight into that Max Guard, so waiting one turn of the Gigantamax here as the passing shot does come out from the Incineroar. So just going to be lowering that special attack and the attack, but critically the special attack there on to that opposing Charizard and particularly while there is no sun on the field you can see here as well Jonathan doesn't have the capability to be setting that for the Charizard so unless Leonardo wants to switch in the ground on here at any point there's going to be no solar power activation for that Charizard and particularly when it's at minus one it really wants to have that additional boost. Yeah, and you, you really are going to be relying on it now after that parting shot. It's a nice play again here from Jonathan going for that similar play to game one where, you know, taking advantage of the, the threat that Venusaur is and where all the attention is from Leonardo's side of the field, protecting here with that max guard and then utilizing that parting shot once again, which is going to be to great effect. But Lou, like you mentioned, you know, you want to be bringing in the Groudon, but it's kind of a double-edged sword because you bring in the Groudon in this situation, then you activate that chlorophyll ability on the Venusaur, which then allows it to get an attack off. Um, so yeah, you're going to get more damage onto the field, but you're also going to be allowing the Venusaur a little bit more and kind of getting out of its turns. Yeah, and I like this yawn as well from the Umbreon. Having Inner Focus, it doesn't have to worry about the fake out from the Incineroar there. It can go for the yawn. If Incineroar decided to stay in, then it's going to be yawned. Um, and with the safety goggles, it's really the only way that Leonardo has the opportunity to try and put that Pokemon to sleep. And then if it switches out, you're going to be able to catch a yawn on the Pokemon that joins the field. Yeah, but the thing about leading the Charizard in this match, the other aspect here is it really does give your Umbreon a lot more protection here because the Umbreon out on the field now, you, you not necessarily having to switch around and then you can utilize that that yawn. And I think, you know, we mentioned it, one of the things that Leonardo needed to do was utilize his Umbreon like he did in that initial set. So you see the Charizard fire off a big attack into that Venusaur. Yeah, even at minus one, the life orb there helping out to deal a huge chunk of damage to that opposing Venusaur. The Venusaur is going to go for the G-Max Vine Lash into the Umbreon. Again, it can take it reasonably well, but that residual damage is going to start chipping away at the Pokemon. Umbreon is going to go for a Snarl though, so where it goes, you know, you lowered the special attack of my partner Pokemon, I'm going to do the same to you. Venusaur now is going to have its offensive capabilities reduced by one stage. Yeah, and now it's in that, that really awkward position where, you know, Jonathan can't really get his... his uh, get really anything more out of the Venusaur here, you know, it is going to go down this next turn, uh, which then gives Leonardo a little bit of an easier time if he has that Groudon in the back, which he suspects he does, um, because there's not really the threat, you just then need to concentrate down onto the Kyogre after that point, and that makes it a lot easier for Leonardo, especially with something like Umbreon, where you can go for a Moonlight here, you know you're not going to get knocked out uh, by the Venusaur, you're not going to get faked out by the Incineroar, <laughs> and the Incineroar probably isn't strong enough to take down the Umbreon from this range, so the Umbreon doing a very you know Leonardo doing a very good job to preserve this Umbreon throughout this this second game yeah and we've seen it previously when Leonardo is able to preserve the Umbreon go for those moonlights particularly in the sun where you can get that additional HP recovery as well that really has kind of been what's needed towards the end game for Leonardo to take a victory in one of these games so it's going to be interesting to see how its longevity is going to stand out on the field Jonathan making another adjustment though that Incineroar keeps jumping in and out of the action in this grand finals and finally we're going to see some weather action in this game too as the Kyogre joins its visibility setting the rain out on the field this is obviously going to reduce any firepower from the 
um, Charizard, but it's going for that max airstream. So starting to put a little bit of the speed control into play here. Going to be boosting up the speed of that Charizard and that Umbreon by one stage here. Of course, taking that little bit of chip from the life orb as Umbreon goes for the moonlight. And this is where I like the play from Jonathan, just putting the rain in here. It means that the Umbreon's not going to be able to regain as much HP as if something like the sun was on the field, for example. Um, Venusaur as well, going for that max ooze. So going to be boosting up his special attack by one stage, doing a little bit of damage to the opposing Umbreon. But again, the switch in here to Kyogre is really, really nice because you're boosting up the special attack. So if maybe the Umbreon had gone for something like that Snarl, your Kyogre would at least be at neutral. But then if it doesn't go for the Snarl, your Kyogre's at plus one. Yeah, and that's the big thing here. The, 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 the problem is with the Kyogre coming in, and Leonardo makes a really nice read there because he just goes for the safe play in case Jonathan went for the max guard with the Venusaur there, uh, making sure that he gets something out of this last uh, Gigantamax turn with his Charizard, getting damage onto the Incineroar, or really punishing anything that comes in for that switch. And you see there that Kyogre taking a lot of damage from that max airstream. It gives the Charizard a uh, speed boost as well as the <laughs> Umbrian, which puts it in a bit more of a precarious position for Jonathan and also puts Kyogre down to a, a point where it's, it's so low. You know, anything that really is going to hit it now with another turn of the residual damage is going to be able to pick up the knockout, kind of forcing Jonathan here, like you see, to, to adjust his board position now. The Incineroar is pretty safe switching. It's not really going to take too much damage from the Charizard or the Umbrian, so it's a nice, nice way to kind of protect your Kyogre for later. You kind of forego the, uh, the the special attack boost that you've kind of put work into getting with that max ooze which is a bit unfortunate because really you want to be getting tornadoes onto the field get the tailwind up and really trying to take advantage of that special attack boost with those origin pulses especially with the rain being active on the field yeah, you're right, Lee. It's difficult for Jonathan to be able to control any speed here without the Tornadus. And we know that that Charizard is running Hurricane. So in the rain, it's going to be able to find its accuracy. But instead, just going straight for a Protect here. Doesn't want to take any damage on this turn. As the Kyogre does go for that Origin Pulse. So going into the Protect out of that opposing Charizard. But will be able to find its mark in the rain on that Umbreon. And it is at plus one. So this is going to do a huge chunk of damage and actually be able to pick up the KOs. Once again, Jonathan is able to remove the Umbreon from play, but it does give Leonardo now the free switch to bring in a Pokemon from the back. Yeah, I like this play from Jonathan because I think preserving the Venusaur is quite smart because especially if the Groudon is in the back, like you expect Leonardo to have the Groudon to come in to kind of disrupt the weather, put the sun up on the field um, and make it difficult for Kyogre to really do anything going forward in this match. It also means the Groudon coming in now is mm. not going to be intimidated by the Venusaur. It means that Jonathan's going to have to really adjust now because the Precipice Blades are going to easily pick up the knockout onto the Kyogre um, and potentially onto the Incineroar. But the one thing that Jonathan does have he does have you know access to fake out here and he can go into that crowd on um, and hope maybe that the Charizard hasn't got enough to kind of pick up a knockout onto the Kyogre or you switch the Kyogre out to maybe Tornadus uh, to get it back in later in this game and, and dictate the weather a little bit more. Well, Incineroar choosing to fake out into that Charizard as Kyogre does go for the Origin Pulse. Charizard manages to avoid out of the way, but it will connect down onto that opposing Groudon. And at plus one does a huge amount of damage. It almost picks up the one hit KO, living on a slither of health there, being able to then activate its Citrus Berry, regain a little bit of HP, but can Groudon find its mark with these Precious Blades? Yes, it can, connecting on both of Jonathan's Pokemon here. Picks up a solid double wow. KO there, amazingly. Yeah, and it's a nice play from Jonathan again, you know, not wanting to sacrifice anything he's got in the back and really utilize these special attack boosts. And, you know, it pays off there. He is able to get the Origin Pulse onto the Groudon. Unfortunately, he does miss the Charizard, but the Groudon just hanging on there, just enough health to get the Precipice Blades, and it does connect, fortunately, for Leonardo and taking down, you know, both the Incineroar and the Tornadus, um, the, the Kyogre, because the Tornadus is going to mm. enter the field right now, Lou. Yeah, paired up with that Venusaur as well, and of course, Venusaur finally happy to be on the battlefield when the sun is in the sky. It's going to be able to have that speed. And, you know, you can always have additional speed support as well from that Tornadus with a Tailwind. But if you're Jonathan here, you might want to start trying to get some KOs. Yeah, and I think you need to, like, right now, you know, you're both both the Charizard and the Groudon um, are so low health, so you can hit them. You know, the Tornadus can just go for, uh, for a, a Heat Wave, and it will knock out both Pokemon boosted by the sun. It, and then it comes down to what has Leonardo got in the back. If it's the, the Regieleki, then, you know, preserving the Venusaur here is, is the, big, the big thing, because Venusaur will then 
maybe be able to get a sleep powder off, but it's still going to be very difficult because then you're relying on the Reggie Alecki kind of missing maybe Electro webs going forward. Or yeah, there's a number of different outcomes still to play out in this match. Yeah, Groudon just going for the protect and the Venusaur wisely choosing to target down that Charizard with a cheeky critical hit as well, just to guarantee that it's been removed from the field here. Tornado does go for the heat wave, but of course to no avail with the protect there. And this is where things get interesting because the Venusaur has that capability with the Chlorophyll ability being in play and the Tornadus can always try and go for that Tailwind and really boost up the speed, particularly in the face of Leonardo's Venusaur that's just joined the field at full HP. Yeah, and now, you know, the, 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 I, it's a real kind of tie here for Jonathan because you really want to be going for the Heat Waves to just get damage onto the opposing Venusaur. You know there isn't any um, protect there, but you do have to worry about Sleep Powder. And if you spend a turn going for Tailwind, then you are going to be a little bit susceptible maybe to the, the Sleep Powder because the Venusaur has the Sash on Leonardo's side of the field. Mm -hmm. So do you spend this turn potentially going after the Groudon and then rely on uh, your Sleep Turns being short with Tornadus? Because that would be the thing that you kind of want to rely on here. Well, Groudon getting another Protect here. Going to be preserving itself as Tornadus does use this turn to set up that Tailwind. But you're rightly, the Focus Sash on that Venusaur could be difficult to deal with. The Venusaur on Jonathan's side going for the Weather Wall down into the Protect. So Leonardo's Venusaur able to survive out this oh, turn with misses. his Focus Sash intact. But it misses Lee and misses that crucial Sleep Powder. Yeah, and it was going to happen at some point. You know, you keep hitting that Sleep Powder button. It doesn't have the best of accuracy and it's been good up to this point but there we see it miss for Leonardo and that's a huge miss now because it gives Tornadus the ability to outspeed the Venusaur and the Groudon and just click that Heat Wave button which it'll take down the Groudon and take the Venusaur down to the Sash leaving Jonathan's Venusaur faster with the Tailwind up now being able to knock it out but it all relies on a Heat Wave hitting you know <laughs> we have seen a lot of moves miss already in this set so is it going to be able to connect that is the big question going into this one for Jonathan. Yeah, this is where things get very intense for our players. They're going to be crossing their fingers and hoping that the moves are going to be able to connect. The weather ball comes out from the Venusaur, of course, going to be able to find its mark on the Groudon. And this time, no protects, of course. And Groudon will be KO'd, leaving Venusaur the last chance here for Leonardo. But Tornado's able to find the mark with the Heat Wave. Going to be taking it right down to its Focus Sash. So we'll be able to survive out this turn. But with the speed advantage that Jonathan has got, it's literally one HP away from Jonathan being able to take this game too. Venusaur is going to go for the weather ball, though, to try and deal some damage here down onto that opposing Tornadus, but Jonathan's got the speed and just needs to connect one move to take game two. Yeah, now with the more accurate weather ball to kind of rely on from his side of the field, he's in a, in a great position to kind of lock this one up and take that 2-0 lead in this set and it's a it's very similar kind of outcome to how the the previous match started you know jonathan took a, an early 2-0 lead and then mm -hmm. the tables turned after that so um but the, the adjustments that jonathan's made coming into this set are phenomenal you know he's got one more game potentially to take the entire tournament um but leonardo's got all the work to do now he's just not been able to utilize the venusaur like he had in the previous games and you know we, the charizard adjustment there was brilliant but just not quite enough in the end. That's the thing, I love the Incineroar adjustment coming in here um, for Jonathan because it just applies so much pressure, whether it's going for fake out, whether it's going to go for damage, whether it just means that Jonathan's Pokemon can't go to sleep, or as we've seen in those first two games, going for that parting shot that I think has been really, really interesting play from that Incineroar so far. Yeah, the parting shot, you, you, we've seen how effective that can be in both games now and it's really paid off for Jonathan um, in both sets, just reducing the damage of these big powerful hitters, you know, on Leonardo's side of the field, just allowing his Pokemon to kind of sit around a little bit longer um, and just do the work that he needs to, uh, to set up an endgame position where he's able to capitalise and take it. Um, very well done in that last one, of course, because the Charizard did complicate things a lot, you know, the Charizard was a big threat to Venusaur, mm -hmm. and, but it limited the Venusaur's ability on Jonathan's side to really do very much um, but and that, that at the same time you're limiting what the Charizard can do because all the attention's dragged over to that side of the field the, 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 the Kyogre coming in did take a lot of damage mm -hmm. but in the end you know Jonathan was quite bold with keeping it on the field and making sure that well I've got the special attack boost here with it I'm going to take advantage of it even if the sun goes up 
Yeah, exactly. And of course, we are in a double elimination tournament here. And like you said, Jonathan's one game away here from being able to force a kind of bracket reset because he's taken one loss in the tournament so far, but you don't get knocked out until you've taken two. And Leonardo's got no losses at the moment. So even if Jonathan's able to take this best of five set, then the bracket resets. Leonardo's had his one loss and then it really does start to come down to a very, very intense grand final. So far, the action has been amazing. So I think we shouldn't waste any more time and jump into game three and see if Jonathan then is maybe able to force that bracket reset. Let's have a little look at the leads. It's going to be Umbreon and Charizard once again for Leonardo. Whereas on Jonathan's side of the field, we've got Venusaur and Incineroar. A great combination that's got him two victories so far in this first best of five set. Yeah, and uh, again, Leonardo knowing that the, the Charizard probably the best answer to the Venusaur here on Jonathan's side of the field. I wonder if we'd maybe see a different play though from Leonardo this turn, or whether we will just go for the same play as last turn, you know, the, the G-Max Wildfire into the Venusaur, and then just go for the Yawn into the Incineroar slot, knowing that the Incineroar will go out um, before the, the Yawn goes off, so whatever comes in will be subjected to that Yawn. And that'll make it a little bit more difficult and a bit more open for Leonardo to to utilize the Charizard going forward. And of course, you know, if Jonathan does decide to go with the, 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 the Gigantamax on the Venusaur again, then he does have to go for that Max Guard until he is able to potentially get a parting shot off again. Well, Umbreon gonna leave the field. We know how key that is as a Pokemon for Leonardo. And Regielecki is gonna join the action straight away here and apply some good pressure. Maybe trying to try and stop any sleep going down. But we're gonna see the Dynamax, however, coming out from Leonardo's um, Charizard instead. So no Dynamax Regielecki. I think I'm the only one upset by that because everybody else wants to see Gigantamax Charizard in action. And we saw how well it did for Leonardo previously as well, even taking that parting shot. And maybe Jonathan has changed things up in this particular game. But so far, no, it's going to be another Gigantamax Lee. Yeah, and maybe Leonardo, you know, predicts the, the Max Guard here on the Venusaur and goes for the Max Airstream onto the, the Incineroar because then you're putting, you know, Regieleki into a point where it's probably not reachable by Tailwind um, from Jonathan's side anymore, and that makes the Regieleki even more dangerous. But, you know, by leaving the Venusaur alone, it is risky, but we'll see how this turn plays out. Yeah, Jonathan playing a really similar strategy, and so far this game is turning out very similar to the previous one. Max Guard from the Venusaur, the G-Max Wildfire going into the Max Guard, and of course Incineroar utilizing parting shots to just weaken the offensive pressure from that Charizard. It does allow Jonathan a really nice pivot to some of the Pokemon in the back as well, and you can see we've got Tornadus and Kyogre to choose from. Yeah, and you'd think maybe, you know, both are difficult to bring in in this situation in front of a Regieleki, but then you do have to switch back to the Incineroar if you are in a, a precarious position, or you could maybe just sacrifice the Tornadus. I don't know if you want to do that at this point of the game to get the Tailwind up. It's a very difficult situation to be in, but most most of the time, I think, probably what Jonathan does here, bring in the Tornadus, potentially just switch back into the Incineroar and preserve the Tornadus Kyogre mode for later on this game. Um, it does... You know, the Venusaur's in a great position where it was that, that first game where it's going to be able to take an attack from the Charizard here. Um, and maybe if you are uh, Leonardo, you, you maybe want to just pivot out with the Regieleki here going for a Volt Switch or maybe go back into your Umbi and get it back onto the field. Um, but it is a big prime target, that slot now for the Venusaur to potentially get a, a G-Max Vine Lash off and start that residual damage that both players are going to want to try and take advantage of this next turn. Yeah, Venusaur looking really strong. Even if a Max Airstream comes out from the Charizard, we know that Venusaur is carrying the Cobra Berry on Jonathan's side. So it's going to be able to take one of those Max Airstreams really well, particularly at the minus one special attack thanks to that parting shot. There is going to be the Incineroar rejoining the field and Regieleki is going to be leaving, doing a quite powerful Volt Switch there into the Incineroar, doing some good damage to it. That could come in critical a little bit later on, particularly if maybe this Charizard has doubled up into that slot. Yeah, and that's a big thing. If the Charizards went after the Incineroar switch here, then, then it makes things very difficult to utilize it going forward in this game. But then it does create a little bit of room for the Venusaur to get that, that, that G-Max Vine Lash off and kind of come away unscathed in a, in a lot more healthier position going into the final turn. Yeah, Umbreon just going to rejoin the field here for a little bit as Charizard does go for that G-Max Wildfire, this time able to connect down onto that opposing Venusaur, doing a good chunk of damage, but as we saw in the previous game as well, not going to be enough to pick up the KO, particularly without Sun and at that minus one drop. Venusaur going to retaliate as well with the G-Max Vine Lash into Umbreon, and I think, Lee, things are playing out very, very similarly at the moment between our two players. 
Yeah, and you know, the, the, the Charizard's got one more turn of its G-Max left, as well as the Venusaur. Do we see a similar turn where, where Jonathan preserves the Venusaur again, goes for the Max Guard, and then maybe utilizes the Parting Shot again, or utilizes maybe even the Fake Out this turn, rather than switching in the Kyogre like he did last time uh, to take that big Airstream from the Charizard. Maybe this time you kind of let the Incineroar go, then get your Tornadus onto the field, get your Tailwind up, and then really utilize the Kyogre in the Tailwind to kind of close these turns out. The one thing that you could do maybe if you are Leonardo is try and maneuver Regieleki onto the field, which might end up being quite a free turn for you here uh, if the Venusaur doesn't attack. And even if it does, you potentially have the, the opportunity to just attack into the Venusaur again and, and knock it out, which gives the Regieleki complete uh, freedom. But the problem is, like you've mentioned, the Cobra Berry on the Venusaur, it's probably just in range now to actually be able to take an Airstream. Yeah, the airstream is going to come, but find its wow. mark on Cineroar that's going to survive <laughs> on one HP. Amazing there from that Cineroar. Just wants to hang on. It knows it's in grand finals. It doesn't want to go anywhere at this stage. Of course, Leonardo's side of the field is going to be getting that plus one speed boost. Umbreon follows up with a foul play, though, however, and Cineroar's little sweet victory there at one HP is very short-lived as it will be KO'd by the Umbreon. The Venusaur, however, is still free to move and goes for that max ooze, targeting down into the opposing Umbreon. This time it's not going to be able to boost up the Kyogre switch in that Jonathan did previously, but Venusaur will still be pleased to get a plus one attack, special attack boost. Yeah, and that's the thing. I don't think you mind too much about not getting the Kyogre with the special attack boost because I think the, the it coming in with full health is way more valuable to Jonathan than coming in very low health and getting chipped down by the residual damage from the G-Max Wildfire. So it's, an, it's a nice way, you know, the Incineroar's kind of done its job. It's disrupted the Umbreon enough to put it in range for pretty much anything to hit it now and, and take it out. And uh, the Tornado entering the field for Jonathan will allow Jonathan to kind of get the jump on the Charizard, uh, be able to either knock, uh, do some damage to that or knock out the Umbreon. Yeah, I'm a little bit worried for this Umbreon here at the moment. It's got really low HP. Another one of those residual um, Vine Lash damages is going to be able to pick up the KO against it if it's unable to go for something like a Moonlight here. Of course, ideally, you would like to get Moonlight in the sun to give Umbreon the most HP possible, but then you don't want to boost up the speed of this opposing Venusaur. No, and that's the thing. It's... A, it's it's really difficult because you know you're kind of tied you want it on one hand you want to boost your charizard power <laughs> so you can do the maximum damage but it, it, on the other hand you don't want to allow the venusaur any more freedom than it's got at the minute and you want to kind of keep try and keep it in check it's going to be difficult with the tailwind from the tornadoes on jonathan's side of the field because like we've said you know the venusaur in a tailwind is going to be able to attack either the charizard or the umbrian before they're going to be able to move and then once you've got your tailwind up if the venusaur does go down here it paves the way for the the kyogre to potentially you come in and then um, that is a perfect situation for Jonathan going forward. Very true. The Tailwind does indeed go up and Venusaur is able to pick up a KO against that opposing Umbreon with the Leaf Storm. Charizard, however, frees move and goes for that Blast Burn, targeting down into the opposing Tornadoes, surviving on 15 wow. HP here. But of course, residual damage is going to come into effect. Pick up the KO against the Tornadoes, and I think it might be picking up the KO against the Venusaur too. I'm not, not sure. I can't remember how much HP it's got remaining. 33, able to survive on 6. Oh. So close to going down there and a really nice play from Leonardo to kind of get, you know, a last ditched attack off and get rid of the Tornadus because the Tornadus is one of those Pokemon where we saw in the previous game where, you know, if Leonardo switches in the ground on a certain time, then he can take advantage of the Heat Wave. Uh, if not, then you can take advantage of the Hurricane. Uh, so it's a, it's a great Pokemon to get rid of and it means the speed control. If you can kind of play out these Tailwind turns, it's going to be very difficult, of course, with the Kyogre just coming onto the field. But if you can, then you're going to be in a great position to try and close this matchup. Yeah, that's the thing. Jonathan doesn't have the, I guess, the switchability at the moment to change the weather if the sun does come into the field. And I think if you're Leonardo, if you can just remove that Venusaur, um, which is going to be easy with residual damage and the low HP that it's got at the moment, then when you get the sun up, you don't have to worry too much about this Kyogre being able to deal out big offensive pressure, particularly if you're able to, like you said, Lee, stall out the Tailwind um, and then allow your Regieleki to just do its thing. Yeah, and I mean, what you could do is preserve... Well, you can't preserve the Charizard. You've got to allow the Charizard to go down here. You've got to protect your Regieleki because of the recharge turn that you're taking now with Charizard from the Blast Burn. But it's an easy thing to do because, like you say, the residual damage is going to be enough to take down the Venusaur anyway, which just leaves you two on one. And Regieleki in the sun probably going to be able to take one of these big, powerful water spots from the Kyogre, which puts Leonardo in a great position to potentially pull this match a little bit further back in his favour. 
Yeah, Regilecki very happy with his protect there, able to obviously survive um, taking any damage in this particular turn, except from the bind from the G-Max earlier on. So going to be taking a little bit of damage, but of course so is Venusaur, and it will be KO'd thanks to the G-Max Wildfire Flames there. So Kyogre is now going to be the last remaining Pokemon here for Jonathan, and depending what Leonardo's got in the back, I am suspecting it's going to be that Groudon there, it's exactly who it is, and the Sun's going to come onto the field, weakening the offensive pressure from that Kyogre, but I think you made a really good point there, Lee, it's going to come down to whether or not this Red Gileki can survive water damage in the sun. Yeah, and the residual damage here has definitely helped reduce the, the attack power of the water spout, but it's still going to be hitting extremely hard. But we know the Groudon can take this attack in the sun from full health, which, you know, Leonardo is sitting at now. It can take a plus one from, from pretty much full health, so it's going to be able to take a... Uh, you're relying on a critical hit here from the Kyogre on probably bulk targets here. You know, you're probably leaning towards, if you are going to get one this turn, hitting into the Regieleki, getting the critical hit there, um, and then you can make maybe pick up the ground on the next turn after that. Yeah, we'll have to see if Jonathan's able to find its mark. It's going to go for the water spout, however. You know, Tailwind making it the fastest thing on the field. Regilecki and Groudon, however, both able to survive that water damage in the sunshine. Of course, Groudon going to have its Citrus Berry as well. Just regain a little bit of HP, have a little snack. Grand Finals is going to be a long tournament here as Regilecki goes for that Thunderbolt, able to connect into Koga and the sheer power of Regilecki, particularly with that Magnet Boost as well, dealing huge damage to the Koga. So Leonardo is going to be able to take a game, and as things stand at the moment in this first best of five it is 2-1 to Jonathan yeah, Leonardo doing extremely well to kind of pull that one back and um, not swaying with his decision and uh, how he altered his kind of uh, lead in, in, in that second game where he stuck with the Charizard because he, he believes that that is going to be a better route to dealing with the Venusaur mm -hmm. and it really turned out to be because not only do you limit what the Venusaur is able to do, you, you put a lot of pressure onto the, the, the partnering Pokemon as well and as we saw there, getting rid of the, the Incineroar like he did in that one turn um, was just so valuable to kind of close out the rest of the match because then you're forced to almost bring in the Tornadus at that point which then leaves it open to be knocked out that turn because the Venusaur still not putting pressure mm -hmm. on really in that respect um, and then when it comes down to just two Pokemon on your side of the field and then Leonardo still got the ground on to bring in and dictate the weather with the Regieleki on top of that mm -hmm. very difficult to kind of come back from at that point. I think it really shows the intensity of the match between these players. Obviously, they've already played five matches earlier in winners' finals, and now they're here again fighting against each other with the same team. And I think the interesting thing is, the past two games we've seen have played out almost identically. There were lots of the same uh, Max Guards, Max Finals, Max Wildfire, and then the same switches were occurring. But it comes down to, I think, one move where things do change. That one thing that's different can either tip the scale in favour of one player or another. And of course, in this game, I think you called it perfectly, losing the Incineroar, uh, particularly with that Max airstream targeting down to that slot followed up with the foul play just meant that you know jonathan lost that one pokemon that's able to pivot in go for the fake out go for the parting shot and just lost that momentum a little bit yeah and and now it falls back into kind of jonathan's side where he can make an adjustment and maybe look at something like tornadoes kyoga going into a lead mm -hmm. because that in front of Charizard Umbreon is great. You're free to set up your Tailwind, fire for water spout. You do need to worry about the Groudon coming in, of course, and potentially the Charizard Maxim, but you didn't. You still have the option to max your Kyogre at that point, so you don't take as much damage from the Charizard, and you can knock it out and then keep your weather in place. So there are a lot of variables here going into this next match, <laughs> and it is, you know, we've said it, it's a running theme throughout this, and it will be a trend, you know, in these best of five sets where mm -hmm. it will be about adjustment from the players and the, the player that makes the better adjustment in each game is the one that's going to come out on top. Well, let's jump into game four and see if Jonathan's able to win one more game and force a bracket reset or if Leonardo's going to be able to take this particular set to a game five. Leonardo's going out once again with Umbreon and Charizard. It's believed that he wants to stick to it. Gotten that last victory in the game and Lee, you called it perfectly. <laughs> Jonathan's changing things up and Tornadus and Kyogre are out on the field. That classic sort of weather combination. Yeah, and I mean, it does put a lot of pressure, a lot more pressure on to Leonardo's side of the field. It means that he's kind of, you know, the, the Umbrian can stay on the field and go for a, a yawn, but we've already seen kind of the power of the Kyogre here and really limits what Leonardo's able to do because do you bring the Groudon onto the field now? Because if that Kyogre does decide to click the, 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 the Dynamax button, then the weather's dictated. It's on your side the whole time. And you're not worrying right now about the Venusaur, which is the, 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 the one thing that you would worry about if you're Jonathan. You know, 
you've still got your tornadoes kind of sitting beside you, protecting you. And Charizard's in a, in a really awkward position here where it just does not want to stay out on the field, even Gigantamax facing down against a Kyogre in the rain. Well, Umbreon's going to be the first one to get in on out of there as Leonardo does bring in the Groudon to try and bring the Sun onto the field. But like you said there, Lee, if the Kyogre wants to Dynamax up, it's going to be able to just bring the rain right back onto the field and Leonardo would have to either, you know, switch out and switch back in because with the Charizard, even if you Gigantamax that up with Wildfire, you don't get that secondary effect of resetting the weather up. You get the flames instead. So interesting mechanics here, but Jonathan actually going to Dynamax up the Tornadus. And I really am glad that we get to see this because it is that life orb variant. And we also know that it is carrying um, Heat Wave as well. So in the sun, it's going to be pretty happy. Kyogre, not so much, however. Leonardo is going to be, however, going for the Gigantamax of the Charizard as well. Yeah, and it's a it's a nice option here from Jonathan, kind of identifying the tornadoes as a route to go down because you can go for that that max airstream here, give the the Kyogre a boost, and even though you are in the sun still. The combination with the Life Orb Airstream and then the Water Spout on top of that in the sun may be just enough to get the Charizard. And if it is, that really tips the match completely into Jonathan's favor here. Yeah, I absolutely love the synergy. Well spotted their lead, getting that booster before the Kyogre can even move as well. Just amazing. We see how much particularly a full HP Kyogre can deal. Even in the sun, it goes for that Water Spout. Oh, it is going to pick up the kill against the Charizard. So Leonardo's not going to be able to utilize his Gigantamax Pokemon at all. And did you see the damage on that Groudon Lee? Yeah, and it's huge, you know, in the sun, and that's what makes Groudon it's so difficult to switch in. It's a really difficult Pokemon to switch in against Kyogre. Even if you get your sun up, you're taking so much damage, and now it's a very difficult position. Hopefully, Leonardo, for him, as a player, has the Regieleki in the back, because it can come in, it'll still be able to potentially outspeed maybe the Tornadoes, maybe the Kyogre, depending on how they've been trained, but it is Leonardo's kind of last hope at this at this point because this combination, especially with that Tornadoes going for the Max Airstreams, is such a strong combination where you can even just protect your Kyogre here and go for another Airstream and then bring something in from the back if the Tornadoes goes down and then utilize that speed that you've got on the Kyogre. And there's no reliance on Tailwind running out now. The Kyogre's will be stuck with that plus two for the rest of the game as long as it stays out on the field. Yeah, Umbreon going to join the field instead of that Groudon that has retreated. Reggie Lucky is able to outspeed and go for that Thunderbolt though into the Tornado. It nearly picks up that one-hit KO, but Tornado is able to hang on and go for that Max Airstream down into the Reggie Lucky. The Life Orb boost dealing a huge chunk of damage, but it looks like it was actually able to hang on. It is not very effective, but unfortunately, Reggie Lucky not the bulkiest of Pokemon. It's still going to deal a huge chunk, and Tornado is able to hang on as well due to the Life Orb recoil. Kyogre very, very happy even in the sun to go for this water spout, picks up the KO against Reggie Alecki that we know was such an offensive pressure to the Kyogre. You know, doesn't want to take any of those electric type moves. And it gets to do a little bit of damage to the Umbreon. And Jonathan really quite firmly in the driving seat here in this game. Yeah, and it's such a, a, a really innovative way to, to go with this lead because you're expecting the Kyogre to be the thing that maxes here, but it's not. It's the Tornadoes, and it's done such a good job, you know, and that being able to take that Magnet Boosted Thunderbolt from the Regilecki is huge, allowing you to survive as well with the recoil damage and just put you in a, a huge dominant position now where it just allowed him to kind of take this game. I mean, amazing play there from Jonathan, really changing things up in such dramatic 